welcome to lecture 38 we are into the last unit of your course signals and systems very interesting one the topic name the chapter title is z transforms i can write it as a, a pretty easy to, easy unit for you know understanding as well as uh, even i can say it is a scoring one here you need uh, a bit of knowledge on uh, Fourier uh, representation, but not, you know, I cannot call it as prerequisite. So basic knowledge, if you have, that's sufficient for understanding the Z transform concepts. Let me share my screen. In lecture 38, we are focusing on the topics, introduction of Z transforms, wherein we cover upon basic concepts as well as definition of Z transform. We also look into what's the meaning of Z plane what's the meaning of poles and zeros and we'll have some examples on it and we'll learn the properties of ROCs ROC stands for region of convergence and related problems the course contents for unit 5 goes like this first we'll study about basic concepts then uh, uh, Z plane all those things will come under basic concepts properties of region of convergence then these first two topics we are in, we are covering today in this session okay so in the next session we'll be covering upon properties of z transforms we have a lot of properties like how it was in fourier transform properties in the same fashion then we have inversion of z transform unilateral z transform and then last is transfer function z transforms dtft which we have studied already it's a representation of a discrete time signal in terms of complex sinusoids e raised to j uh, omega right here the z transform is a representation of a discrete time signal in terms of complex exponential signal that's the difference complex sinusoid is different complex exponential signal is different and it's a discrete time counterpart of laplace transform i hope you have been learning this Laplace transform in your mathematics, engineering mathematics. So we will try to relate Laplace transform, Z transform and Fourier transforms in this session. I'll just give some hint. So all these transforms, where, what should be used, why we are studying all those things. We'll try to understand that in this session. Possible to, uh, it is possible to obtain a broader characterization of discrete time LTI system and their interaction with these signals using ZT, that is Z transform. A few people call it as ZT also. ZT, ZT or Z transform all means same. The DTFT can be applied solely to the stable system. You remember this. DTFT can be applied only for the stable LTI systems. Since DTFT exists only if impulse response is absolute summable, this we had discussed. If it is absolute summable, then only we call it as stable. And, on, and only for stable LTI system, we can apply DTFT. In contrast, the advantage that we have in Z transform over DTFT is the Z transform of the impulse response exists even for unstable LTI system. That's the biggest advantage here. For unstable system also you can do the analysis using Z transform wherein it is not possible using DTFT in Fourier representations. That's the advantage. That's why we are learning Z transform here. Many of the properties are similar to those of DTFT. So we have uh, learned uh, properties of FT since on similar grounds properties of DTFT will be there. So here ZT properties are also in the similar manner. Now I said you that I'll be linking between Laplace transform, Z transform, Fourier transform. All those things we'll be doing here. Recall that in Laplace transform, we represent any signal using complex exponential. Complex exponential, right? E raised to S T. We were writing it as S T or minus S T. So this is nothing but e raised to minus sigma plus j omega t, right? This is equal to e raised to minus sigma 
e raised to minus j omega t right you just observe here the sigma component is in addition with this complex sinusoid this is complex sinusoid so we had used Fourier representation for Fourier transform we used only this component to represent the basis of any signal whereas in Laplace transform we have this additional term right so this makes the difference between Laplace as well as Fourier so Fourier is Fourier is Fourier is representation of any signal using complex complex sinusoid sinusoid whereas Laplace it is complex exponential complex exponential this is complex exponential s is a complex term right it's a complex term complex number so it's a it's it it is coming in the exponential um, part so hence we call it as complex exponential here it is complex sinusoid now what is this zt before that i have taken a s plane you have come across this s plane so this s plane here this marking is pole this marking is zero okay so we'll understand what is the meaning of poles and zero how it is useful in the uh, coming slides here the y-axis is an imaginary axis and x-axis is a real axis of a complex number that we are representing whatever the pole that fall on the left side of the s-plane we call such a system as a stable system if it falls on the left side of the s-plane we were calling it as a stable system i don't go in detail because our interest is on z-plane so z-plane is also derived in the same manner but there is small difference the small difference okay so let me write it here continuous time discrete time okay continuous time and discrete time in continuous time we use laplace transform lt stands for laplace transform in discrete time we use counterpart as z transform Similarly, in Fourier domain, in continuous time, we were representing it with Fourier transform. In discrete time, we were representing it, it with DTFT. So, whenever we talk about continuous time, it is LT or FT we will be making use of. Okay. So, these things are used for analog circuit design. Analog circuit design. For example, if I am supposed to design an amplifier, so i need to make use of either lt or ft so lt or ft i need to make use and majorly we use lt why we use lt over ft is because lt can be used even for analysis of unstable system also wherein ft is used for only stable system okay this is for analog when it comes to discrete or digital domain digital domain we use zt or dtft and why zt is preferred over dtft because dtft can be used only for stable lti system whereas zt can be used even for unstable lti system also hence zt is preferred okay so these things these basic concepts please understand because you have been learning these laplace transform fourier transform z transform as a chapter and I'm trying to link like where what should be used because ultimately these mathematics you are supposed to use in the electronics design being an electronics engineer right so what particular thing where should be used that you should be aware right so you should know like from where I have to extract the information and where I have to fit in where I have to put this use this that is what I'm telling here Laplace transform is used for analog circuit design Z transform is for digitals okay so normally here in signals and system or digital signal processing we call it as analog filters or filter can be interchangeably used with system analog system or analog filter both mean same so here the ZT used for digital filter or digital system you remember this okay so with this we'll proceed with the Z transform the topic of our interest the first topic is definition of Z transform 
Derivation is excluded. Hence, I have just because the reason is you have uh, learned DTFT in in detail. So hence, in Z transform, we are just trying to take its advantage over DTFT. Okay. So let Z is equal to R into e raised to j omega. This is in the polar form. So R term is introduced here. So it's a polar form. I said in Cartesian, it is a complex number actually. This is a polar form. So Z is equal to R into e raised to j omega. Be a complex number with magnitude r and angle omega. Angle omega. Okay. So Z t of a sequence x of n is defined as just the definition you should remember. X z is equal to summation n ranging from minus infinity to infinity. X of n z raised to minus n. Remember this. Z raised to minus n. This is a definition. Very important definition. You have to remember this throughout this chapter. And Z T pair goes like this. X of N will result in capital X of Z. Okay. So this is a Z T pair. Now we shall understand the term called convergence. What do you mean by convergence? Convergence is nothing but it is the term derived from converging signals. Diverging and converging like that. Converging signals. So it's a phenomenon of signal converging. We call it as convergence. The ZT transform or Z transform exists when the infinite sum in the above definition converges. Okay, of course you can represent for analysis, but it exists only if infinite sum is in the above function is converging. A necessary condition for convergence is absolute summability. We have been using this term very frequently. Absolute summability can be derived as taking its magnitude should result in less than infinity. For example, this term I am taking x of n z into z raised to minus n products magnitude of a product. So this magnitude of the product should be equivalent to x of n r raised to minus n. So z have substituted with z have substituted with its magnitude. So what is the magnitude of z? The magnitude of z is so in polar form in polar form polar form the mag z is equal to written as r is to j omega actually the magnitude here is r this is the magnitude okay and angle is angle of z is omega so this is the polar polar form so hence that's why i'm writing only r because i am taking its magnitudes so r is to minus n it's equivalent the range of R for which this condition is satisfied is termed as region of convergence, ROC. So, ROC use, is used for finding out what range of the value of R will result in stable system. Okay, so even you can represent unstable system. If the poles exist, if the region of convergence, you know, outside the region of convergence, we call it as unstable system. We will look into it in detail in the coming slides. The Z plane. The Z plane on contrast with S plane is graphically represented as real axis of Z plane, imaginary of axis of Z plane in the same manner how we had S plane. In S plane, we had we were deciding about the stability of the system by finding by by you know placing the poles on the left side of the S plane. But here it is it is somewhat different. Here we have this is Z is equal to r into e raised to j omega. So this can be represented as a circle wherein you know see here this is r r and this is omega. So r into e raised to omega represent is represented this point represents that in Cartesian this is polar form in Cartesian if you uh, convert it you will get x axis and y axis some point. So in polar form it looks in this fashion. So for various values of angle for if angle ranging from 0 to 360 degree if i plot this it will result in a circle it will result in a circle this is called z plane okay so if x of n is absolute summable absolutely summable the dtft is obtained from the z transform by setting r is equal to 1 you know it's very simple to relate dtft and z you know x of z you know x of z is z means what z means r 
into e raised to j omega right now r if i set it to 1 what i get i get it as x of e raised to j omega it's it's nothing but dtft okay so that is what is shown here the dtft and z transform can be related by just substituting r is equal to 1 that's it if you substitute r is equal to 1 it's as good as you are performing as a dtft this is called unit circle of radius 1 unit circle is nothing but circle with radius 1 fine so if r is set to 1 it's like you're doing dtft so hence z transform can be used even to perform dtft okay so this is the advantage now here's the z plane i have drawn the unit circle there the equation z is equal to e raised to j omega describes a circle of unit radius centered on the origin of the z plane why because in place of r we have substituted one so one and omega ranging from 0 to 360 degree if i plot it it will take a circle it will round it will take a circle and whatever omega you have that can be defined in this fashion okay so dtft corresponds to the zt evaluated on a unit circle okay if zt is evaluated on a unit circle then it is as good as you are performing dtft fine this contour is termed as unit circle in the z plane contour means this boundary we term it as unit circle in the z plane remember the frequency omega in the dtft corresponds to the point on the unit circle at an angle omega with respect to the positive real axis that is what i just now said so we shall take one example let the sequence x of n is equal to 1 comma 3 comma minus 4 0 1 2 3 1 2 6 now here we need to find out z transform of it and as well a dtft from that it is just you know i am trying to link this chapter with the chap unit 3 which you have already studied dtft answer goes like this the dtft to determine dtft to determine z transform i use a standard definition this is a standard definition i asked you to remember it x of z is equal to x of z is equal to summation n is equal to minus infinity till infinity x of n z raised to minus n now you can see here i substitute what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is this is n value is equal to 0 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 4 5 6 now when i substitute n value as 0 substitute n value as 0 here 0 you get when you get 0 here z raised to 0 z raised to 0 is 1 x of 0 so x of 0 is what x of 0 is 1 so hence i got it as 1 now similarly n is equal to 1 i substitute n is equal to 1 if i substitute x of 1 x of 1 is 3 z raised to minus 1 3 z raised to minus 1 that is what is here now similarly 2 if you substitute you will get it 3 so for an n value 0 1 2 3 4 5 you get it so now let me substitute phi and check i'll substitute phi here x of phi x of phi is 2 so uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 x of phi is x of phi 0 1 2 3 3 is gone so 3 is not there so hence it is 4 5 6 because for 3 your x of z, x of 3 is 0 so it has vanished so when i substitute n is equal to uh, 6 what i get x of 6 x of 6 is 6 z raised to minus 6 all together it is summed summation of all these things will result in x of z is equal to 1 plus so and so okay so here one more important concept you should remember so in mathematics in mathematics there is something called nan not a number right not a number is a one when you divide something by zero so denominator should never be occupied by zero so such case there is a chance of uh, having such case here z inverse z inverse z in, everywhere there is a z inverse it is like 1 by z this is like 1 by z square 1 by z raised to 4 1 by z raised to 5 like that 
so when I have 1 by z in this fashion I have a component here z should not occupy the value 0 because if that happens then this will result in a not a number it is not defined in mathematics so hence ROC you should write it as ROC is entire z plane except z equal to 0 because for z equal to 0 we don't have a meaning for it so that's what you need to write ROC is entire z plane except z equal to 0 why except z equal to 0 if you put a z equal to 0 it will be a 1 by 0 form which is a not a number now similarly if I take its DTFT I get it as x of e raised to j omega is equal to replace z with r into e raised to minus j i r into e raised to j omega you know that z is nothing but r into e raised to j omega so when i have been asked to find out the dtft so let me keep r is equal to 1 so we substitute e raised to j omega because dtft can be extracted from the z transform by setting r is equal to 1 that is what we studied so set r is equal to 1 we get e raised to j omega so replace z with e raised to j omega 3 as it is e raised to j omega so minus is there here j omega e raised to j omega so 2 is there minus 2 is there so here so same components you go on getting so this is dtft i hope there are no doubts now we shall take one more such example uh, the same sequence i have taken only thing is i have changed the indexing so n is equal to this is 0 now this is minus 1 this is minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 and minus 6 now if i substitute 0 value here x of 0 is what x of 0 is 6 here because the arrow mark is placed here x of 0 is 6 x of 0 is 6 small x of 0 is 6 right so x of 0 is 6 z raised to minus 0 z raised to 0 is 1 so x of 0 into 1 is x of 0 itself that is 6 so that is what you get this is for n is equal to n is equal to 0 I got similarly for n equal to 1 if I substitute what I get n equal to 1 so you don't have value at all so I should substitute n equal to minus 1 so if I substitute n equal to minus 1 x of minus 1 is 2 so 2 I have written z raised to minus of minus 1 okay, because n is equal to minus 1 so minus of minus 1 is 1 z raised to 1 is z that's what I wrote let me substitute x equal to n equal to minus 6 so if I substitute n is equal to minus 6 what do I get x of minus 6 is 1 1 is written z raised to minus of minus 6 is z raised to 6 that's what so this is your capital X of z now uh, what is a ROC ROC is so uh, what value we should not substitute here you should it should not result in infinity so if I substitute infinity, infinity means everything gets infinity. So it will be undefined, right? So make sure that your Z is not infinity. Okay. So ROC is entire Z plane except Z is equal to plus or minus infinity, right? So make sure Z is not infinity, fine. So similarly, DTFT can be extracted by substituting Z is equal to E raised to J omega means by setting R is equal to 1. Replace Z with E raised to J omega. E raised to J omega means E raised to 6 J omega, 3 into E raised to 5 J omega, it goes on. So in previous example, I shown a example where ROC is entire Z plane except Z is equal to 0. Here I am showing entire Z plane except Z is equal to plus or minus infinity. What's the meaning of ROC? ROC means where the system is stable. When all the system is stable. So this system is stable for all the case, whatever is possible, all the cases of value, whatever value you put in Z, for all those cases, this, this system is stable. Only for one case, it is not stable. What is that case? That is Z is, should not be equal to plus or minus infinity. Similarly, in the previous example, ROC means what? ROC, ROC is, it defines stability of the system. This system is stable for all the case, except z is equal to 0 because for z is equal to 0 it will result in not a number or infinity that's the meaning i hope now you are getting some idea about roc now we'll have one more example so i have changed the index now so n is equal to 0 here this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is minus 1 this is minus 2 now according to the definition you can check when i substitute n is equal to minus 2 z raised to minus of minus 2 is z square 
z square is there so uh, minus 2 x of minus 2 is 1 so 1 similarly if i substitute n is equal to 0 so z raised to 0 is uh, 1 x of 0 x of 0 is minus 4 minus 4 is here similarly if i substitute uh, x of, um, n is equal to 4 z raised to minus 4 z raised to minus 4 x of minus x of, x of 4 is 6 6 here this is x of z and its roc is c here z if i substitute infinity it it crosses the uh, region of convergence if i substitute 0 here 1 divided by 0 z inverse means 1 divided by 0 so that also result in unstable systems or infinity so those two things i don't cover to define the roc roc is entire z plane except z equal to 0 and z is equal to plus or minus infinity so i combine the first two problems roc concept and define this example i hope you got an idea and dtft substitute z is equal to e raised to j omega that you have been doing it it's very simple so these were the examples i take one more example x of n is equal to delta of n if x of n is delta of n find its set and roc so i have written the definition here so x of z is equal to 1 y replace x of n is equal to this is summation delta of n z raised to minus n so delta of n exists only for n equal to 0 substitute n equal to 0 so when i substitute n equal to 0 this is equal to x delta of 0 z of 0 this is equal to 1 so once delta of 0 is 1 so x of z is equal to 1 so what value of z what value of z will make it infinity or will make it not a number you put any value here any value raised to 0 will result in 1 infinity raised to 0 is 1 0 raised to 0 is 1 so hence there is no value of z which will result in a not a number or a infinity hence the ROC is entire z plane so very special case for what input value the region of convergence is entire z plane question it's delta of n that's it so in the similar manner we can twist the question like what if delta of n minus 4 so delta of n minus 4 means substitute x of n with delta of n minus 4 so this delta of n minus 4 will be 1 only when n is equal to 4 substitute n is equal to 4 I substitute n equal to 4 delta of 4 minus 4 is 0 it means it goes to 1 so substitute n equal to 4 z raised to minus 4 so z raised to minus 4 similarly I take one more question if I have delta of n plus 4 this goes to 0 only when uh, this goes to 1 only when n is equal to minus 4 minus 4 plus 4 is 0 delta of 0 is 1 so hence I substitute n is equal to minus 4 so when I substitute n equal to minus 4 z raised to minus of minus 4 is plus 4 so z raised to 4 x of n is delta of n plus 4 when i substitute minus 4 it goes to 1 so 1 into z raised to 4 is z raised to 4 so when this goes to infinity so this is z inverse right so i, I should not place z equal to 0 hence roc is entire z plane except z equal to 0 similarly here i should not place infinity i should not uh, you know put z value as infinity so I, roc is entire z plane except z is equal to plus or minus infinity very simple right so very simple in order to identify the roc so uh, we have one more problem here determine z transform of the signal uh, again a sequence is given you have to find the z transform and also determine z t of t so to determine z t of t substitute r is equal to 1 so that z is equal to e raised to j omega so x of z is so when n is equal to minus 1 when n is equal to minus 1 it is z raised to minus of minus 1 is z so z you got so x of minus 1 is 1 so 1 you got so when n is equal to 0 z raised to 0 is 1 so uh, z of uh, x of 0 is 2 so 2 is there similarly for n is equal to 1 x of 1 is minus 1 minus 1 is written here minus 1 and z raised to minus of 1 is z raised to minus 1 so similarly here replace z with e raised to j omega uh, i did not write it x of e raised to j omega is so replace z is equal to e raised to j omega e raised to j omega plus 2 minus e raised to minus j omega plus e raised to minus j 2 omega or 2 j omega so this is dtft because i have set z is equal to e raised to j omega making r is equal to 1 that's it 
So this is all about the problems on the basic concepts. I hope you don't have any doubts up till now. Next is poles and zeros. What are poles and zeros? The most commonly used form of Z-transform in engineering application is the ratio of two polynomials in Z-inverse. So this is the most common used polynomial for engineering applications. So B0 plus B1Z inverse plus so on. So, so it continues B BM Z raised to minus M divided by A0 A1Z. So this is a polynomial, ratio of polynomial. So this is how we represent X of Z. This is one more way of representation. Remember one few thing or one of the important thing here. Numerator polynomials, if I find its roots, if I find its roots of the polynomial of a numerator, we call it as zeros. Numerator polynomials roots are called as zeros. Remember this. Denominator polynomials root is called as poles. That's it. Think that it's a order. It, it's a polynomial of order two quadratic equation. You have a quadratic equation here. You have a quadratic equation here, both. So if I find its roots, we call it as zeros. If I find its roots, we call it as poles. Remember this. Okay, poles are playing very important role in deciding the ROC. In, in turn, in deciding the stability of the system. Remember this. Okay. Now, convergence. We shall understand convergence in much more detail. The Z transform exists only when Z transform exists when the infinite sum in above equation converges. That is simple, quite simple. Necessary condition for convergence is absolute summability of the product. So this is a standard definition. So this product, this product should be, should result in less than infinity. In place of Z, I have written R raised to minus N because magnitude of Z is R. Z raised to minus N magnitude is just R raised to minus N. So this is what, okay, that's why I have written this fashion. This should be less than infinity. Then only it is, it guarantees the absolute summability. ROC is the range of R for which the above condition is satisfied in terms is it, it is termed as region of convergence of Z transform. Unlike DTFT, ZT can also be used to analyze the unstable system also. So DTFT can be obtained by Z, ZT by substituting R is equal to 1, Z is equal to E raised to J omega. This we have already understood. So first problem, very important, please concentrate. Determine the Z transform depict ROC poles and zeros in the Z plane. What you need to do is you should draw a graph of ROC, find out poles and zeros in the Z plane. You need to denote it. That's the meaning. The first question is this is X of N. So the standard definition goes like this. This is standard definition of Z transform. X of Z is equal to summation alpha raised to n because this is x of n in place of x of n i have substituted alpha raised to n u of n z inverse u of n means what u of n is um, 0 to infinity so hence i write it as 0 to infinity so this alpha raised to n this will result in summation n is equal to 0 till infinity alpha raised to n z raised to minus n so hence i can write it in this fashion also or else i can write it in this fashion alpha divided by z raised to n both are okay so this will result in you know that you know one standard form that is summation n is equal to 0 till infinity alpha raised to n will result in 1 divided by 1 minus alpha provided alpha is less than 1. I hope you remember this. Okay. So hence, I this is a standard definition we had used in chapter from since from chapter 1. Okay. Using that, I can write it as 1 divided by 1 minus alpha into z inverse. It is, it is here. In place of alpha, I am having alpha into z inverse. You can also write in this fashion. But this is applicable only for this case. So here, what we do is, 
we write some condition like this this is applicable only for in this range why because you just here for this i applied a standard form that standard form tells that alpha should be less than 1 alpha should be less than 1 so similarly if i write alpha raised to z inverse alpha raised to z inverse should be less than 1 right should be less than 1 so if i write it so what i do is i take z inverse on this side alpha divided by z 1 okay so i invert it because i want to bring in this form i invert it z divided by alpha when i invert it so you should take the conditional operator um, in the invert the conditional uh, symbol also so this is one so alpha i take it on the other side so i get it as alpha c so from here we have arrived till here that has been directly written okay so how it is written because i am applying a standard definition standard formula here wherein it says this formula can be applied only for alpha less than one why if alpha is greater than one what happens take an example of two two raised to n two raised to n is a growing exponential when alpha is greater than one it is a growing exponential it will not converge at all so hence this is the this is the condition for convergence ROC we call it as always ROC if Z is greater than alpha then only it will fall under region of convergence that's the meaning okay so this can also be written as this can also be written as I take this one as alpha by Z Z I take it here I write it here 1 divided by 1 minus alpha divided by Z so Z I take it here z minus alpha divided by z simple simple uh, mathematics z divided by z minus alpha that is what is written here so this is your x of z and roc is this is a roc roc or z plane i can say so in z plane imaginary axis of z real axis of z what's the pole pole is a denominator's root what is a denominator's root Denominator's root is z minus alpha is equal to 0. So, z is equal to alpha plus alpha. That is marked here. Pole is marked with a star symbol or a cross symbol. This is alpha. And what is the roots of numerator? z is equal to 0. This is a 0. Numerator's root is 0. So, 0 is marked as 0 symbol. This is 0. This is pole. Okay. so remember this and your region of convergence is denoted here this is region of convergence what it says z should be greater than alpha means region of convergence is greater than alpha all this shaded region shaded region is a region of convergence this is a region of convergence. in this region wherever the value falls the roots fall then the values fall the system is stable so inside this unit circle if uh, it exists then it is unstable system okay that's the meaning of roc so similarly we will take up one more example y of n is equal to minus alpha raised to n u of minus n minus 1 so this u of minus n minus 1 if i plot it it looks like this u of n is u of n is like this continues u of minus n minus 1 means minus n means in uh, take it uh, take it on the uh, reflection it's a reflected version shift it by one more time so it will get it as from minus 1 it starts here it is 0 minus 2 minus 3 it continues this is called u of minus n minus 1 so this term we call it as anti causal exponential signal this term we call it as anti-causal exponential signal anti-causal because it it is not causal at all it it exists only on causal system means which depends whose output is dependent on present and past values if 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 the signal is only future valued then we call it as anti-causal exponential signal why it is exponential because the uh, alpha raised to n, uh, n term is there that's why it is exponential 
So in place of x of n, I write it as uh, whatever is given. Here in place of x of n, we have y of n. y of n, I wrote it here. So define the limits. u of n minus n to minus 1 exist from minus infinity till minus 1. That is what I write. So this minus I have taken out. In uh, summation, n is equal to minus infinity till minus 1. That is what you are till minus 1. So here it is 0. So hence I define u of minus n to minus 1 range as n is equal to minus infinity to minus 1. So alpha raised to n, z raised to minus n. So alpha into z raised to minus 1, or whole raised to n or else you can write it in this fashion. Both are okay. So here we should be very, very careful. What I do is I take one variable called m which is minus n. So now, wherever n I am having, change its sign. So in minus infinity becomes infinity, minus 1 becomes 1. So that I can write it as, here it is k, okay, k it is. So k is equal to 1, infinity. Always the upper side should have the higher number. So k is equal to 1, infinity. And this you know it. You have two ways to do it. One is, you know, I take k is equal to 0 till infinity, z by alpha raised to k okay okay so here you should be very careful fine uh, what i have done is summation k is equal to 1 infinity i have changed the sign right so hence in place of n what i am supposed to do if k is equal to minus n n is equal to minus k this minus I have taken inside, so I inverted it. So that's why z by alpha I got. That's it. A simple, uh, you know, some simplification. So this one, this one is very uh, easy for me to solve because I have a standard formula for it. But it is k is equal to 1. What I am supposed to do? Either I can substitute k minus 1 is equal to uh, p or something, I can solve it. Or else, I write this, I subtract, I subtract from this, I subtract from this k equal to zeroth value. I substitute k is equal to zero. What I get? k equal to zero. I substitute here. Something raised to zero is one. I get it as one, right? So what I do is I subtract this whole term with one. So I get this itself. It's it's like this is equal to this because I have taken from k is equal to zero and later on I'm subtracting that value. Here k is equal to zero value is also existing. I can write this as k is equal to 0 value and there on summation k equal to 1 so and so but k is equal to 0 value I don't want because it is not there here so hence I subtract with that so that's why I get it as so minus symbol is there so if I enclose this with minus sign because I replace whole of this term with this one so this becomes minus value and minus 1 minus becomes plus 1 so this is what I got Either you follow this method or else you can also follow the other method. Replace k minus 1 is equal to m. So therefore, k is equal to m plus 1. Fine. So you can write it as this one. Summation till infinity. There is minus sign here still. In place of k equal to 1, I write k minus 1 is equal to 0. k minus 1 is means m equal to zero this these things we have done it in convolution right so z by alpha z by alpha uh, in place of k i should write m plus one okay then what you are supposed to do z by alpha raised to one i take it outside so minus z by alpha i took it outside what is left? Summation m is equal to 0 till end. I am showing the alternate way, okay? So either this or this, whatever is possible, you can use it. z by alpha raised to m. Now you see, you can apply the direct formula. That is minus z by alpha. So apply the formula for this. It is like summation alpha raised to m. 1 divided by 1 minus z by alpha. The condition for this is z by alpha should be less than, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, less than 1. Should be less than 1. In that case, uh, because in place of alpha, I am having this, 
if if this term is greater than one it will be growing kind so that's why we write it in this fashion so if i solve it what i get z this alpha i take it on the other side so i just uh, take this here so you can see here z less than alpha same thing is written okay either you can use this or else you can use this so here um, what i have done is 1 minus 1 divided by 1 minus z, uh, z uh, this this term is written so ultimately it will result in here you can you can write uh, 1 minus z z alpha raised to minus 1 take it this side 1 and minus 1 cancels so uh, here you will be left with 1 minus z alpha raised to minus 1 so uh, multiply by alpha throughout so you get this one so you can solve it similarly here also we get the same thing you can see here so we get minus z by alpha divided by 1 minus z by alpha so i multiply by alpha throughout so what i get minus z alpha minus z so this minus i take it to the denominator i get z divided by z minus alpha the answer is matching so either you can follow the printed uh, answer or else from here it deviates from this statement this statement is very important you prefer the way you choose the way whatever way you are comfortable you choose the way so this is the other way so whatever is comfortable for you you choose it now to uh, find the roc this is roc so roc means roc exists for z less than alpha so the zero is the uh, pole is z is equal to alpha this is pole and zero is z is equal to zero this is zero because from numerator root is zero this is a pole because from denominator i got the root as alpha so this is alpha this is zero and region of convergence exist less than alpha so alpha is here it should exist less than alpha so this is inside it this is the roc shaded region okay so that's it this is about the second kind first kind i shown where the roc exist outside the outside the circle now it is inside the circle two different types i took now the third type is two sided sequence so uh, it is like this is the, the second problem we solved this is the first problem kind we solved wherein alpha is equal to 1 by 2 here that's the only change now i apply a standard formula so standard formula standard definition in place of x of n i have substituted the equation you know a uh, uh, summation will break uh, we, have, we have to break the summation here so for this the range is 0 to infinity for the second term the range is minus infinity to minus 1 so i write it here the first one 1 by 2 so z inverse means 1 by z i write it here common raised to n u of n range is n equal to 0 till infinity minus is there minus is there u of minus n <coughs> minus 1 its range is minus infinity to minus 1 so z raised to minus 1 minus n can be written in this fashion okay again for for second term you can deviate your answer you can prefer the steps that are comfortable for you <clears throat> either you can write 1 minus uh, whatever you wish so here i retained it as it is here i made n is equal to i inverted the sign so i took k value as minus n so this infinity become minus infinity become infinity i wrote it here and minus 1 become 1 i uh, i write it on the in the below and then i invert the symbol here so it, it is 1 by z raised to minus k so 1 by 1 by z raised to minus k is nothing but z raised to k so that z raised to k i write, write and here it was i write it here only this term okay only this term i write because it looks complicated for you k is equal to 1 till infinity 1 by z raised to minus k you got the 1 by z raised to minus k is nothing but z raised to k both mean same so if you take minus 1 inside 1 divided by 1 divided by z inverse is z z raised to k you get it so this can be solved in any way so i show it in previous uh, slide so this same component can be written as 1 minus summation k equal to 0 infinity remember when k is equal to minus 1 to infinity you can write it as k equal to 0 to infinity only thing is uh, it should be subtracted with 1 but there is a minus sign here so to compensate the signs get inverted this one comes over plus and this term gets minus because it is a minus sign here so you can prefer any method now you can apply the formula summation alpha raised to n 
if alpha is less than 1, you can apply 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So, 1 divided by 1 minus in place of alpha, I am having 1 by 2 by z or else 1 by 2 into z inverse and here plus 1 as it is minus here in place of alpha, I am having z 1 divided by 1 minus z. Okay. So, here you should be very careful about ROC. So, this first term ROC is different, second term ROC is different. So, you should be very careful about it. Here, this is a second term, this is a first term. Okay. So, first term ROC says that your 1 divided by 2 raised to z should be less than 1. This is what it says. This second term says that z should be less than 1. Okay. So, that's why what I do is this I further simplify. 1 by 2 I retain it here. Z I took take it on this side. I invert it or else I write it in this fashion. Z, Z should be greater side 1 by 2. Okay. So, 1 by 2 less than Z, 1 by 2 less than Z is here. And here it says Z less than 1, so Z less than 1. I combine this term as well as this term, both of the terms. Because I have two terms, both terms are opposite in terms of its range. So, hence I got, this says ROC exists for Z equal to less than 1, Z less than 1. And this says ROC exists for Z greater than 1 by 2. So, how to write the ROC now? So, to write the ROC, you know, it is further simplified. You can simplify it to get this. So, 1 minus Z taken here. Uh, I mean, you take the uh, LCM and you can do it. You do it and you arrive at this equation. You can do it by yourself. Okay. So, ROC is very important uh, now. So, this is ROC. So, I draw the diagram here. So, first I mark the poles and zeros. So, poles and zeros you have to here there are two uh, z, uh, poles these are two poles one is z is equal to 1 by 2 mark it here and another is z is equal to 1 mark it here and what about zeros z equal to 0 mark it here 2z minus 3 by 2 2z minus 3 by 2 is equal to 0 2z is equal to 3 by 2 so z is equal to 3 by 4 this is in the numerator so hence it is a 0 so there is a 0 here 3 by 4. So, I marked it all these things. Follow this for ROC. Z, ROC exists for a circle greater than 1 by 2. ROC exists for circle greater than 1 by 2. So, here I circle I drawn. The outer, the outer surface of that circle is ROC. That is what first term says. Second term says ROC exists within 1. So, I draw one more circle with radius 1. So, ROC is within that. So, it is like this one. This is a concentric circle or a ring circle. Okay. So, concentric circles within that region contour, your ROC exists. So, this is about the problems on uh, Z transform, basic definition Z transforms. So, in the next session, we will start up with properties of region of convergence, uh, convergence and problems on it. With this, we are uh, Concluding today's class, uh, thank you.